The 2019 fall sports season is in full swing here at the University of Rio Grande. We'll discuss all of that and more. Eye on the Storm is next. It is the August edition of Eye on the Storm. I'm Randy Payton, the Sports Information Director here at the University of Rio Grande, joined as always by my co-host, the Athletic Director here at the school, Jeff Lanham. And as I said in the tease, we are in full swing. It is off and running, and uh, get on the train or get run over. <laughs> it is. We had our, um, I think we've had all of our physicals with all of our uh, student athletes. We had our all-athletic meeting last night in the Fine Arts uh, Building. That's kind of the kickoff to get things started. Classes are underway. We're in, we're in our second week, and um, it's full go ahead. We've got an in-studio guest today, and, and his team is one of the uh, ones that has already uh, got into action here in this 2019 season, and we're joined by women's soccer head coach Tony Daniels. You guys are off to an 0-2 start, but... Uh, Given the fact that uh, you've got so many new players and, and a lot of things to try to figure out, uh, I don't know that 0-2 is, is a great surprise. No, it's not, Randy, and uh, thank you for letting me join today. Um, had some issues uh, with the university and, and some other things that um, we have a very young team. So we have nine returners. We have eight incoming freshmen. Uh, so right now, yeah, I'm starting – four girls that played significant enough time last year and then other than that everyone's new so um, you know the old adage you got to crawl before you can walk and that's where we are right now um, when I made the schedule you know if you want to be the best you have to play the best and I'm, I'm right there and I know where we're going um, and it's about the journey so as long as we can get everything correct before our conference play we'll be fine. You talk about your schedule it, it 0-2, it's not been an easy start. You go on the road to Cumberland's, who's receiving votes in the preseason poll, and then you come back here uh, and open last weekend against a tough Indiana Wesleyan team. You guys haven't dodged anybody early. <laughs> no, and then, uh, you know, the way the schedule lays itself out, again, I'm, I have 11 games on the road this year and seven home games. So, you know, but um, I think for the culture and the where we're going to go, it's going to be good. So this weekend we go up to Detroit. We play Lawrence Tech. Um, and then we'll also finish with our second game of Lords. Um, so, so, Tony, uh, the, you talk about the new people that you've got you know, coming in. Most are freshmen. Uh, and you and I have talked about that the biggest difference that, that they have with where they've played. And, and they've played on travel teams, high caliber travel teams, but it's still it's that speed of the game Correct. That, that's different that people don't understand till they get out there and see it and feel it and now they're experiencing it. Yeah, the, the, the college game or the collegiate game is very, very different from the high school or club scene. And it's all about the speed of play. Um, and it's about being comfortable on the ball and it's about playing very quick. Um, and it's gonna be a little bit of a groundbreaking in with these girls. Sure. Um, and it's the mental fortitude going forward with that. And th that's the biggest hurdle that we're trying to get over. Um, you know, we're, we're doing two-a-days right now, and the girls are getting up, and we're playing, and we're doing cardio, and then we're also playing in the afternoon, too, to try to understand the speed of the game. And that's, that's where our deficit is right now. Um, but against those bigger teams, the better teams, you know, the speed of play is incredible. Um, so you're only going to benefit from that in the long run. Um, so, but yeah, the girls that we've brought in, and the nice thing is they're sponges. They want to learn. They want to be out there. So the passion is with them. Um, and, and, you know, they're pushing the upperclassmen. So, Jeff talked about a, a number of new faces, and I think we've got a photo from the game the other night. One of the, one of the new faces is actually, I guess, a veteran face. In, uh, not, Ambar, a, not a freshman. Ambar, <laughs> yeah, Ambar Torres, somebody who's been here for a while, but finally getting to be on the field. Correct. Ambar Torres came to us a couple of years ago, and through uh, the NAI Eligibility Center, she was uh, deemed only one year of experience or one year of eligibility. So this is her last go around or first go around. 
um, all put into one. So she, yeah, she, she's my leader, so to speak, on the field. Uh, she makes things happen. Um, the negative is there's inexperience around her. So it's about getting those tendencies, the, 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 verbal, the verbal, excuse me, the nonverbal cues. Um, and the more that we play, the more that we're going to go ahead and do that. And she's the type of player that she will put the ball where those girls need it. But it's just through experience of playing. So I, I guess another good thing to have back is the offensive player in the year in the conference, and that's Peyton Davis, somebody that if you can get her the ball, she's proven she knows what to do with it. Correct. And she's another one. Um, you know, we all are trying as coaches to coach your sport, but we also have to be mentors. And sometimes with issues away from um, the school and the sport, you have outside extremities hitting, um, and we're just trying to find ourselves again. Um, so, yeah, the X on Peyton's back is massive, um, but she's ready to do the hard work and get down to it. Um, so that's what, I, as a coach, I want to hear, I want to see, um, and I'm looking forward to it. Did you also, you know, something else that's new, I mean, you, you lost two experienced coaches from yeah. last year as well. So, you know, you've got somebody <laughs> new coming in helping you. If you want to speak, uh, yeah, we, speak to Ruby there. We lost um, my one assistant, Zach Breath. Um, he, he obtained a job with Chillicothe High Schools. And then we lost my other one, Louise Filo, who played for me when I was with the men. Um, I did was fortunate enough to bring in um, one to help me. Her name is Ruby Bingham. She's uh, originally from Australia. She played four years at our, uh, our nemesis, West Virginia Tech, <laughs> um, which we hold the card there because her senior year, who she was player of the year, we beat him in the semifinal. Um, in the so, fall game. In the fall game. In the fall Correct. game, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, she graduated. She was one year uh, assistant coach at West Virginia Tech, and now she's bringing her experience and her knowledge to, to the University of Rio Grande women's soccer. She is, she's been a blessing in disguise. Um, the last three or four weeks has been great with her, and she's she's given me a different perspective. Um, coaching females, obviously, and having a female assistant is is only going to benefit us. Last thing before we let you go, uh, at least through the first two games, I guess one of the areas right now that you're really trying to shore up is the defensive area. Uh, the loss of Kelsey Lee to graduation, the loss of Andrea Vera to graduation have really shown up in the first couple of games. Yeah, and our center backs. We, we're, we're very inexperienced out of the back. Um, but I have some, some senior players or seasoned players, so to speak, that are, they have stepped up to go ahead and, and take on that role. Um, but yeah, in the goalkeeping position, you know, we've gone from having a, a national team player to a freshman and they're going to make mistakes. But, you know, the best way through it is you're jumping right into the fire. Um, so, you know, I feel confident in their ability and they're only getting better every, every practice. So and you're looking forward to that conference play. Yeah. And that's what it's about right you know, now. The girls, the girls are drinking from the cup, so to speak. They know the process of the next couple weeks and you know it's like anything in life they're going to hit speed bumps and it's the way that you rebound or rebound from those so at Lawrence Tech on Friday night up in Michigan then uh, on Sunday afternoon up at Lords and you're back home uh, uh, Goshen on the 14th so uh, good luck on the road you've got I guess one two three four games coming up and none of them easy nope Nope, but we're looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, so. Tony, we appreciate your time Thanks, today. Thank Thanks. you for having me. Tony Daniels, the uh, head women's soccer coach here at the University of Rio Grande. His counterpart with the men's team, Scott Morrissey, uh, the men off to a 3-0 and start. They're ranked number five in the country. They'll be at home here on Friday, or Saturday night, rather, against Lawrence Tech. And we had a chance yesterday afternoon to sit down and have a chat with uh, Scott Morrissey, and let's hear what he has to say about this 2019 season. Talking a little men's soccer with Rio Grande head coach Scott Morrissey. You guys are uh, number five in the Thank country you, in the preseason. Uh, you reached the national tournament again last year, 20 and one, and uh, I guess a lot of positives to build on going into a new year. For sure. Um, preseason, obviously, the, the, the final ranking of last year kind of reflects where we start this year. Even though it's a, it's a new group, um, you know, it's, we, we, we've got a great deal to prove. Uh, we did lose, you know, five very valuable seniors, guys with great experience. 
but I also feel like we've brought in really good players to, you know, help that transition, maybe ease that pain a little bit. Um, so really excited for the start. Uh, we've got three games under our belt already, so it's a good start for now. We got a lot to work on, but uh, team's improving each day. Kind of leads me into my next question. You mentioned uh, you lose some guys, some key guys from last year's team, but uh, you got a pretty good core to build around in in terms of returnees, and you brought in some pretty nice newcomers. Yeah, the the, the guys that returned from from last year, you know, they 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 all contributed in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know, starting up top with Nicholas. Nicholas had a great freshman year, All American. Um, you know, James Williamson out of the back, uh, another f great season, second team All American last year. Uh, Richard Durrell and Nicole um, had a had a fantastic season in, in his own right. But then I think the guys that you know played a pretty vital role for us last year, Ewan McLaughlin. Um, Callum Malinafi, Sam Pedersen, uh, you know, just to name a few. Those guys, with some of the other, you know, returnees, you know, they've they've made a, a significant difference this year. Cristobal and Cena, um, and then the the one the one pleasant surprise to have back in the in the starting rotation is is Silas Machado, you know, who missed all of last season. Um, you know he's he's an outstanding center back and a and a vital piece for us. And then the new additions, we brought in really good balance on the left side of the field with a left back, an attacking left midfielder, a central defender, and then a, a playmaking central midfielder, just to name a few. And those guys, you know, are all contributing factors and have really up to this point with the matches we've played have done very very well for us typical Rio team, at least through the first three games, and the fact that you guys, you do enough offensively, but it really gets done on the defensive end. Yeah, I think, well, you know, one of the trademarks I think we always work on is defensive shape, and we constantly, we constantly work on that, you know, and, and my motto has always been, you know, if you don't concede goals, you can't lose. And so we spent a great deal of time working on the defensive shape, the organization of the, of the, the, the group, uh, to make sure that we understand, you know, everyone's role and responsibility in relation to where the ball is on the field. So those things, you know, it's kind of speaks for itself. That's that's we got to be defensively sound first and then hopefully defense leads to offense. And, you know, so we've we've had we've had some pretty good production up to this point. Um, and the results kind of speak for itself. And I, we've you know, we've played pretty good opposition too. it's not. No disrespect to the teams we've played, but I've been pleased with the, the the progression up to this point. You've only given up one goal through three games, and that was kind of a fluke in the opener. Well, yeah, I, I, you say a fluke. It was a breakdown of, uh, of of defensive responsibilities on a set piece. And again, what's what's ironic about the whole giving up that goal on a set piece was I literally walked the team through that exact creation of that set piece goal the day before in training and it was just a mental lapse and just guys switching off and so but those things hopefully don't happen anymore but we 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 try to make sure we cover all our bases defensively um so like i said hopefully that doesn't happen again before we let you go you're back here at home this weekend against the lawrence tech team that you opened up the nai tournament against last year in a pretty good program yeah lawrence tech will be very good you know they they return just about everybody from last year's team a team that you know uh, i i think everybody would agree that you know that game finished 4-0 a year ago but it wasn't a 4-0 game um lawrence tech will be they'll, they'll be ready to play they've got a great great group of returning players very very well coached um, so you know that's a that's a great game for us um, you know I know that you know the surface will be a lot different this time around than it was in November <laughs> it'll be green grass versus brown and it'll be you know relatively dry as opposed to a quagmire <laughs> well we wish you good luck this weekend we appreciate your appreciate time today Randy. thank you that's head coach Scott Morrissey of Rio Grande men's soccer as we send it back to the studio
And we appreciate Coach Morrissey taking the time yesterday to talk with us. And, and kind of like we said there in the, uh, in the interview with him, Jeff, uh, they're off to a 3-0 and start. They've played very well, particularly on the defensive end. And boy, what a big game early on in the season they've got coming up on Saturday night. Lawrence Tech, the team that they beat in the opening round uh, of the national tournament last year, and as Coach Morrissey alluded to, uh, a little bit different set of circumstances when you play him this time. Field's a little different, uh, a little more firm. They've got a lot of players back. He's got some new faces. It ought to be interesting. Well, I, and, they're, and they're on the road. I mean, they're at their place, and you know that they will be ready to play any time we somebody plays men's soccer. They've got a big target on their back. Right. Uh, and, and so they need to be ready, and that, that definitely will be their first test that they're going to have. So they'll be in action here on Saturday night at 7 o'clock against Lawrence Tech. Our volleyball team also getting its season underway this weekend with the very special Emily Joe Cooper Memorial Tournament. It'll be played both days, Friday and Saturday, uh, up at Jackson, Ohio at the high school there. And uh, we had a chance also yesterday to sit down and chat with uh, head coach Belina Donaldson about her season coming up and about the Cooper Memorial Tournament this weekend. Talking Rio Grande Volleyball with head coach Belina Donaldson. Um, you guys coming off, I guess, what you would call a tough year last year and uh, been a tough couple, of, uh, tough couple of years, I guess, and uh, now trying to uh, get things righted and headed in the right direction. Yes. Um, over the last two years, we did have a couple bad seasons. Um, had a lot of injuries. Kids not show up that we thought were showing up. So we spent a lot of last year recruiting. Um, didn't really lose anybody last year. So when you ask me about returners, it's right. just going to pretty much be the whole roster. But I, we got a, a nice freshman outside hitter. So we, we finally have a go-to outside hitter that we haven't had in a few years. So we're excited about that. You mentioned the injuries, and that really did uh, uh, derail you guys last year. You had Amaya and was showing signs of being a pretty good player and then in a car accident and lost for the rest of the year. Yeah, lots of promise in Amaya. We're, we're hoping to add Amaya back to our roster maybe next year. Had a lot of things going on. Um, yeah, she was really coming on right, at, right, right the weekend of her accident. She was really starting to come on. Uh, you mentioned you got a lot of people back, and I guess when you when you look about your returnees, uh, I guess you start with Ashley Taylor. Ashley Taylor uh, is is the only girl on our team that got recognition in the conference last year. As of right now, Ashley's not in our starting lineup. She's had some shoulder problems, so she's been standing on the sideline a lot. But like I said, we have a freshman go-to outside hitter who's doing phenomenal. She. She was almost perfect at our scrimmage last Friday, and she, she's an all-around outside. We haven't had an all-around outside since Whitney Smith. And that would be who? What's her name? Mallory Caldwell. Uh, talk about her and, I guess, some of the other kids that are, that are going to be in the starting lineup. Like we said, there's a lot of familiar faces. Okay, well, of course you have six girls on the court at all times, but, but then you have sub-positions, so right. there's like nine starters, really. We have the libero, who's a senior, Katie Hemsley. She'll be playing back row for our middles, and our middles are – Right now, we're, it's Rachel Gilkey, Jess Yaus, and Bailey Percival. But because of Rachel's injury during um, preseason, she hasn't been in the lineup yet. So we'll see where she fits when she gets back healthy. Um, we're actually going to get her on the court today. And then we have uh, Kennison Donaldson. She's a senior right side. And she's going to play all across the front and serve for us. And then Macy, um, not Macy Real, Ryan Stoffel who set for us some last year, is mm -hmm. going to be her DS. And then we have Macy Rail. Uh, she's going to do our run of 5-1 for us. And Macy's a big block on that right side, so we won't be hurt at all with her up there. And then our outsides are Mallory Caldwell and Abby Grasso. And then we have a freshman DS that's going to play for Abby Grasso in the back row. Her name's Casey Train. She's from Toledo Central Catholic. She's a great addition. She's um, a little girl with a lot of energy, and she knows the game. You think maybe some of the struggles last year, you mentioned injuries, but the fact that it was still a relatively young team. I mean, these, kid, these kids have to grow up at the collegiate level. Very, and you can't bring a, a volleyball player into college that was a nice player in high school and expect them to go right away because it's faster, bigger, stronger, and they don't get it until about midseason. So this year, I think we're ahead of that. Um, our, our freshman, Mallory, is, she, I mean, she stood her ground with, everybody we've faced so I'm excited about her. 
Talk a little bit about the conference. I know uh, it's it's Indiana heavy at the top. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> all three Indiana teams right at the top. We we were voted eighth, so that means at least the teams in the conference think that we're going to make the playoffs. Um, after the two years that we've had, I kind of respect that. I mean, I can't argue with their votes, but our goal is to go out there and maybe get up to five, six, and and surprise a few people this year with some wins that we just didn't compete last year. We we had some teams up against the ropes and just didn't know how to win. You're right. There were games where you got off to a good start and then a bad couple of sets and couldn't recover. Right. And that happened to us night after night after night because, you know, I stayed on them all year. You guys have, have the physicality. You have the skill set. You just don't know how to compete. You you got to want to win more than you are okay with losing, and that's something we lacked. But in saying that, we got a, a lady that played for us a couple years ago that left back in Rachel Gilkey. She'll be a sophomore in eligibility, but um, she would have been a senior if she had stayed around, and she pretty much stood up and introduced herself in our first meeting and said, <laughs> if you don't want to win, leave now. So that's the leadership I've been looking for. Talk a little bit about the schedule. Uh, I know obviously uh, inside the conference it's tough. It starts this weekend with a tournament that's very near and dear to your heart. Yes, we, we are hosting the uh, third annual Emily Joe Cooper Memorial Classic at Jackson High School. And we are we're bringing in four other teams, um, Point Park, Shawnee State, uh, Bluefield College, and West Virginia, and West Virginia Tech. Tech. So. Uh, it'll be a quick start with talent because two of those teams are really nice teams. Um, I'm hoping to get back to beating Shawnee State like <laughs> we used to, so we'll see on Friday, Saturday. It's, it's been it's been a pretty good tournament over the past two years, and uh, it, you know it, it's done in memory of, of Emily, uh, who uh, we lost tragically in an automobile accident. Yeah, Emily was my niece, and um, she was a Spitfire. And she definitely wanted to win. And it was almost like when we lost her, we lost the desire to compete. So hopefully with Gilkey back on the roster, we'll get that desire to compete back. And I guess you actually, your first, uh, all of that tournament, by the way, is, as Coach said, was at uh, Jackson High School. Your first home games against Kentucky Christian on September the 3rd. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Um, really hoping that the, the school gets out and really gets into volleyball this year. We have had some really nice student participation here with volleyball. We hope to see that come back. So we want to bring a little bit of excitement back to the court and get some wins in here in the newt and get some kids up here to watch us. I'll tell you what, between starting up at Jackson and then looking at your schedule, uh, you're not really home until October. I know, I know. <laughs> but we're excited about that schedule. I, I see some teams on there that we played tooth and nail with last year that I think we can get wins with. And if we can teach them to win early, maybe it'll take us through to the tournament. Well, we hope uh, for all the best for this Thank year. We appreciate you. you joining us today. Thank you so much. That's Rio head coach Belina Donaldson here on Eye on the Storm. And we appreciate uh, Coach Donaldson and getting back with us yesterday to uh, talk a little volleyball. And it's going to be interesting to see, Jeff, what they do this year. Uh, uh, struggles over the, each of the last two years, but getting their season underway with uh, Emily Cooper Memorial Tournament this weekend. Well, and it's you know, like uh, Coach said, it's exciting that she's got some returners and got some people that she doesn't have to start all over. And even though they have freshmen coming in, when you mix that in with people who have had experience and, you know, have played the top teams in our league and know what to expect when they go on the road, when they come to our place. And so I, I think they're, they're really excited about it. I think they'll be fun to watch this year. Be interesting to see. We've also got uh, some other Fall sports getting underway. Nothing yet for bowling. Golf still in the early goings, but uh, uh, cross country by the time that our next show airs will have its season underway. And it's always a big deal when you start the season with, uh, actually I guess they'll start it early in September down in Beckley right. at West Virginia Tech. But the first home meet, the big one is the Patty Forge Invitation. And that's uh, September 21st, I believe, Correct. Is, the, is the weekend for that. The interesting thing about this, Randy, is this is the 49th running of the <laughs> Patty Forge Cross Country Invitational. And, of course, Patty uh, was the um, athletic secretary here. Ugh, I may be wrong. I think it's 46. I think it was 46 years 
she was the athletic secretary. Um, just a staple. Uh, if you wanted to know somebody's birthday, you, you would go just ask Patty. And Patty knew <laughs> I had all of that. Um, it was unbelievable, you know, when you look back 40 years ago when they were running these, Patty were scoring all of these by hand. And it was just an unbelievable uh, feat at that time. And now, of course, everything's all digitized, digital uh, scoring. Uh, so it, it, it's really an honor for her. It's an honor for us to be able to host this again. And he's expecting anywhere, you know, probably close to 900 uh, to a thousand runners here. They go, they go junior high, they go high school, and they go college. All going on that day. So Rio Grande will be um, just full of people <clears throat> from outside coming in and being a part. I was going. I was going to say, Coach Willie, not necessarily blessed with a great deal of numbers this year in terms of his own teams, uh, male and female. But there'll be a lot of folks here on Saturday. The 21st. Oh, it, it will. It will. It, it's always fun. And and if you've ever been at Rio, people talk about the best cross country course to watch cross country because you can go up on the hill and set and see about three fourths of the of the of the course, which is unheard of. Most right. cross country, you see them come by and they go around and come back again, and that's about it. But here you get to you, you're able to see them, so it, it kind of turned into a spectator sport more than it would in other places. And and you mentioned you got high schoolers and middle schoolers coming. It's a chance, mm -hmm. it's a great public relations tool for this school. It is, it is. And and everybody enjoys it. I mean, people put that on their uh, calendar. The, uh, the high schools do, the junior highs. Uh, they love to come here. Then later in October, we, we host the uh, mm -hmm. high school district uh, cross country meet here so it's an uh, opportunity for them to run on the same course that they'll run during that uh, tournament event in October. One other thing we want to mention before we close out today, uh, registration underway for the Rio Fall Basketball Academy and that also brings a lot of kids in for Coach Smalley and Coach French. And they've been doing this for a number of years. I mean this, this has been multiple years that they've been uh, working. It's a fun. It, it really is a fun. If you have opportunity to to, to bring the youth out and to let them interact with our men's and women's basketball teams. Just a, uh, just a wonderful way to spend a Sunday afternoon. And it all gets started on September the 8th for both the girls' session and the boys' session. There is all kinds of information and links for registration. You can find that at www.rioredstorm. Com. And with that said, we put a wrap on the August edition of Eye on the Storm. We appreciate Tony Daniels for joining us in studio, and we also appreciate Scott Morrissey and Belita Donaldson for talking with us earlier in the week. For Jeff Lanham, Randy Payton saying so long, and we'll talk with you next time on Eye on the Storm.